My name is Shane Schlesman. It's my privilege to pastor uh, this great church in Richmond, Virginia. If you're watching online and we haven't met you in person, we'd love to meet you sometime. Uh, love to meet you right here. So come and visit us uh, anytime. Maybe perhaps uh, next week at So Long Summerfest, uh, we'll see you right after the service having some great uh, fun with all of us, hanging out, uh, eating some great food, and having a, a big time all around our campus. So glad that all of you are here. You guys, uh, summer's almost over. Are you sad or happy? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. And it, all, we just prayed for the students. That's what we need to pray for. They're mourning the loss of their summer. Uh, I know for me, I, I, I did that as a student. I remember like summer just seemed like it just went by like that, right? Uh, well, I'm excited to continue our series um, at WEAG. We've been in a series the last uh, two weeks. This is week three of our series. Uh, and the keys to the kingdom, uh, we've been in this series, the keys to the kingdom. And this week, uh, we already talked about connection and we talked about community in the kingdom. This week, we're talking about the cure of the kingdom. The cure of the kingdom. Now, when I say that word cure, we think of people probably that uh, perhaps something that's going that you need a cure for in your own life, uh, an illness, uh, something you're struggling with. Uh, you may be praying for someone. We're praying for so many on our prayer list every single day. Uh, we pray through a list of people. So when you send us your prayer needs, we pray over those needs every single day. And so I, I think of those. In fact, uh, I want to give an update to you real quick. Um, uh, many of you have been praying for uh, one of our former pastors, Pastor Rodney Green, uh, for his wife, Faye. He actually stepped down in January uh, because his wife was facing uh, a horrible and very rare autoimmune disease uh, that attacked her systems and shut down her systems and her organs. And last year, uh, we weren't sure uh, whether she was going to make it or not. Uh, but God did absolute miracles. The teams at VCU, uh, John Hopkins, and all of the different teams around the country that were actually zooming in just for her case, uh, couldn't figure out how in the world it was happening, but she kept getting better and better and better and better and better. And uh, she's continuing on that. In fact, uh, one of the results, though, of her uh, organs being attacked uh, by this uh, disease uh, was a failure of her kidneys. So she's been doing dialysis every single night. And that's although treating her, it is not fixing it. So uh, she was on the donor list for receiving a kidney. And lo and behold, the way only God can work, it's about a one in a million chance that this would happen. I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but I know it's massive, uh, ridiculous uh, um, numbers of odds, uh, that your spouse would actually be a fit donor for you for an organ. Well, Rod, Pastor Rodney was the right donor for Faye, and actually they did it this week. So she's walking around with a little bit more of Rodney in her, uh, and she's at home. We love you, Faye. Uh, we love you, Pastor Rodney, and uh, we're praying for you continually. Don't you just love the miracles of God? Man, I love it. You know, I... I know that perhaps the cure that you're looking for or needing in life is not um, life or death for you, but some of you are sitting here today and you do need a cure that is life or death in this world. But the cure of the kingdom goes well beyond physical healing, although it involves physical healing and it can involve physical healing because when God has all authority, he can do whatever he wants. That's a pretty awesome place to live, isn't it? In the kingdom of heaven, he is not bound by earthly rules and limitations. So when you go to your doctor and get a diagnosis, he is bound by the scientific rules of this earth and how things work. But the author of science is not bound by that. 
The author of all creation is not bound by that. He took dust and formed it into the most complicated beings that could ever be known and never could be understood by humans themselves. He is and we are his creation. But a cure with all authority goes even far beyond the physical. It goes to the mental, our minds. Who can understand a mind? A mind is very complex. It is, there's no computer that could possibly compare to it. Your mind is having thoughts at, at thousands of times a second and you could not possibly grab them. Even the thoughts that you know about in your conscious mind are the only ones you know about and even those you can't keep track of. Come on. I, I can't remember the last thought. I can't remember. I can't remember things. But let me tell you, my mind is still having them all the time. For some of us, uh, we're a little too conscious of too many unconscious thoughts. And, and that gets very confusing. Uh, the, the traffic jam, okay, of thoughts, right? Anybody have some traffic jams in their brains? Okay. I've got a lot of traffic jams. I wish they would do a better DMV or something up there in my mind. Uh, we need to have that taken care of. Can you, can you handle that for me? Um, we got a, a person who does traffic flow in, in our congregation and works on all that. I need, some, I need some of that in my brain. So I wonder what it would look like to have all authority over my mind, over my thoughts, over my rest. Anybody trouble sleeping? If God has all authority and he's a king and we can come to him and the rules don't apply to him, we can come with, with man, um, all, <laughs> um, some things are impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. We just sang it. So he has all authority over us in our thoughts, in our emotions. Who can understand emotions? I don't even understand emotions. Have you ever been talking to somebody and your voice starts to rise and it's just like about like the salt shaker and you're like not sure why and, and then suddenly the other person looks at you like, why are you mad about this? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just talking like this and I'm going to continue talking like this so I don't feel like an idiot and there's probably a really good reason why I'm talking like this. I just don't understand it right now, but I'll get to it. I'll think of it. Okay. And then unfortunately we try to find something to attach to it. And then we get real big trouble. We don't understand it all. If God has all authority, he is the king. He has the cure for us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And spiritually. See, the spiritual impacts everything. If he is the king and he has a way, some way that we're going to actually talk about today to be able to actually come, what if all that authority was able to come and actually live inside you? If that were possible, then he would have all authority over every thought, every over emotion over every physical attribute. He would have all authority what comes out of you from the inside working his way out. Now, if that were possible, it would be a lot like, I, I know I just talked about Faye Green. I was uh, talking with, been talking with uh, Pastor Rodney a lot and through uh, this week and uh, as he's been at the hospital, of course, for his kidney transplant and uh, and they're both at home now, uh, watching online and, and doing really well. But during this journey, this very scary journey throughout this last year, um, uh, Faye had to undergo a lot of blood transfusions. And, and the reason for that is because in this horrible um, autoimmune disease, it, this auto, your autoimmune system is supposed to protect you. That's what God gave it to you for. But when it's not working properly, when there's a sickness in it, it actually begins to do the opposite. It actually begins to attack you. And so uh, the blood platelets in her, I'm not going to do a science lesson because I don't understand it, but the, there are platelets in your blood that, that travel throughout your whole body, and these platelets were actually clotting 
in all different places in her arteries and veins and all through her systems. And it was beginning to attack her blood, which is a major system. And without it, you cannot live. And so they would have to do blood transfusions because the blood, the white blood cells, the red blood cells, the red blood cells couldn't get through. So she couldn't get enough oxygen. And, and so then now she can't breathe. So they would do blood transfusion. And then the new blood would carry new oxygen. The new blood would carry new platelets. And they would do multiple blood transfusions to give her all the new blood that she need to go to every single organ that her body was attacking. Now the new blood was coming in and giving it what it needed. The new blood was coming into every single cell of her entire body, every organ of her entire body body, everything. Spiritually, God has given a way for us to have a transfusion, to have his kingdom come into every single cell of our spiritual lives and impact every part of our lives. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, the cure I'm talking about, of course, is the third person of God, the Holy Spirit. It is the part of God that actually lives and can indwell you. You become his temple. In scripture, we talked about in the Old Testament, like God would come and dwell in the tent of meeting. He would come and Moses would come and talk to God and speak with God as face to face. And now he's saying that you are this tent of meeting. You can become the dwelling place of God no longer would we carry the Ark of the Covenant. There would be a new covenant that he would make with you with the price of his blood and his body that we just celebrated in communion. And we would remember that always this new covenant has given us a transfusion of spirit living inside of us. And so if you'll go with me on this journey... The Holy Spirit is the missing piece that brings all that God has said, lived, and taught into reality in every area of your life. Maybe you've just known of God. You know all about, you know all about this Holy Spirit. You're like, oh yeah, I know all about the Holy Spirit. Oh, I know all about the Father. I know all about the Son. I know all about, I know about all of that. I, I've studied it from the time I was a child. I was, or I, I, I've been in church. I'm a churchgoer pastor. I've known all this. The Holy Spirit is the active part of God that takes everything you've ever heard about, known about, lived even, and he brings it into reality, into every pore, every cell, every organ, every single part of your life and makes it all reality. He takes the supernatural and he merges it with the natural and he indwells you and this Holy Spirit cure is an inside out, upside down, right side up cure. And that's how we're going to look at it today. In John chapter 14, 15, and 16, there are three conversations that we're going to look at. They're farewell conversations. They're, they're going away conversations where Jesus is saying, I'm leaving here. I'm going to leave you as my followers. And so the king of the kingdom, the one who's going to lay down his life and, and is going to leave them and go back to the throne room. And instead, he has these three conversations with them to talk about the Holy Spirit that he will send. And it will be an inside out, upside down, right side up cure for everything in our world and in your life. Let's look at inside out first in John chapter 14, verse 25. He says, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit from the Father will send and whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. 
every single thing that you've observed, everything that you've heard, everything that I've demonstrated for you, all of it, when I go away, I'm going to send the advocate, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to come and he will remind you of every single thing that I've ever said, everything that I've ever done. He will make it all real to you. How will he do that? Let's take a look at what the advocate is all about. The word advocate is the Greek word parakletos. A paraclete is someone who represents you in Greek times. And this paraclete is two Greek words that actually is para alongside and called to be called alongside. I will send the one, the part of me who will be called alongside. The part of me that you know is God, the son is going away. But the part of me that is being called alongside you, the Holy Spirit is God called to you alongside you. I will send you a paraclete. And in Greek terms, this word would have been a courtroom term. He was saying that I will send to you this paraclete, this the idea of this word that summon, called to one side, called to one's aid, but the secondarily that they would understand it as a courtroom term, as one who pleads another's cause before a judge, a pleader, counsel for defense, a legal assistant, an advocate. So then when he says, peace, I leave with you, verse 27. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit is the peace of God from the inside out. And no matter what situation I face, he is the comforter. A lot of your translations use this term as a comforter. But just the term comforter does not do it justice because then we think in our culture, we think a comforter comes alongside us whenever we're in crisis. That's when we need the Holy Spirit. When we're not in crisis, I'm good. Lord, I'm in crisis again. I'm going to need some of that Holy Spirit. I'm going to need some of that comfort stuff you do. Come alongside me, Jesus. Be called alongside me because I am in distress and I need your comfort. But now when I go back to work and everything's great and I'm having a really great week, I'm good. I'll let you know if I need the comforter again. You see the problem? And an advocate who comes in faces whatever you face. They are the person who faces every decision. I don't know, is this a right decision or a wrong decision? I should consult my advocate. I should consult the one who comes alongside and fights for me, who knows my concern, who knows the authority of the king and doesn't have to live by the authorities of, this, of the rules of this world who can break all of those and bend all of science, I want to speak to my advocate. Well, because I'm facing something impossible. We still haven't quite gotten there, but yes, we're getting closer. He comforts us. He is the peace inside of us. He comes alongside us, and he is an advocate for decisions and crisis and direction and how, how to make those decisions and how, how to uh, take the next step in my life. What is needed in my life? How can he show me what is needed in my life? But if we begin to see this from the inside out, his peace was not given to you for a crisis. It was given to you for a calling to live out every single day in every thought, in every emotion, in every part of your being physically, that he would be the peace from the inside out. He would be the king himself living inside of you. And thus the kingdom of heaven is not just come to this earth. It has come to you and it is living in you and now living through you. 
I'm so glad you clapped because I wasn't sure how I was going to stop that run. Okay. <laughs> it's beyond my ability to, un- to make it make sense here. So let's, let's stop for a moment, pause, time out in this sermon. Can we do a time out? I'm up here trying my best to describe this to you. And the Holy Spirit and this isn't the right understanding, but we use these kinds of terms to help understand it. He's the age, the part of God who's just hovering in this room, waiting to come in like water. And be the transfusion into every dry and weary part of your life. like water to every dry part of your mind. You say, I've tried everything to change the way I think. Good. I've tried everything to change my emotions, but I'm sorry, I just can't. Perfect. I've listened, I've done every treatment, I've done everything I can do, I'm going to keep doing those, but it's not working physically. It's the right time for you to meet the paraclete, the one called alongside you to break all of the earthly rules and bring his kingdom come and alive in you. It is the right moment for you to experience his Holy Spirit from the inside out. And secondly, and now it sounds counterproductive, but it's upside down. Listen to his conversation in John 16, his farewell conversation in John 16. He says, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Now let's just pause right there, okay? It's for your good. Jesus came along, changed their lives, rocked their worlds, healed entire villages, healed their family, touched parts of their lives that they've never been able to touch before and given them vision and mission and they're his leader and they will go to the ends of the earth with him except it doesn't make any sense because their leader, their king is going, yeah, I'm just going to go away and leave you. This is upside down. This is not his kingdom come. Let's, there's a horrible kingdom ruling right now, Jesus. We could use a better king. I don't know what's going on up in heaven, but we could use it down here. They're good. They got the father. <laughs> they didn't even understand that, but, but we understand that. So Jesus says, yeah, it's good for you. I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. See, I am the king living with you here. You don't need the advocate. I'm him. But the advocate can do something I cannot do, which is why I must go away. I must go away. I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong. Now we're talking. Finally, somebody's going to talk to this world and set them straight. Okay, now, okay, now I'm, I'm paying attention, Jesus. Here's, here's what he says. He will, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Jesus, don't leave us hanging. What do you mean when you say sin? So glad you asked, Jesus says, about sin. Because people do not believe in me. Now, there are many sins that Jesus could have listed here that he desired to set the whole world straight in. Right? You agree with that? There are a lot. I mean, just start with you, for instance. (laughs) I know, we don't want to do that. Start with your neighbor. (laughs) Okay. They have got a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things Jesus could have listed in this. 
But the one he was ultimately concerned about and said that the Holy Spirit would come because the world does not believe in me and, and they're falling short. It's not that they're horrible sinners. If you say, I don't believe in God, you call me a sinner. <laughs> I didn't call you anything. I, I just, I just saying there's one who's called alongside to actually fight for you. And he's inviting you to let him come in and give you belief in the king himself. I struggle with that chain. I, Pastor, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Yeah, that's why the advocate wants to come. He wants to come to help you with your unbelief. He wants to come and give you faith that if you look at this mountain and say, move, it moves. That doesn't make any sense. I've never seen that happen. Okay, cool. Perfect. I'm so glad you're here. Because it's not happening in your world. In my world, that's no problem. I just speak it. So you're having trouble believing it, having trouble making it make sense of it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does not make any sense. Without the advocate explaining it to you, it does not make any sense. Without the advocate coming to you and giving you a feeling that you know in your gut that it's right, even though it doesn't make sense to anyone else around you, that is the peace that he can offer you from the inside out. But then it doesn't make any sense. It's totally upside down. And this is what he came to to correct in sin. Righteousness. What do you mean, Jesus? About righteousness, by the way. Because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. Righteousness is just a fancy way of saying right living. Okay? There is morality and there is a right way and a wrong way to live. Okay? Okay? Uh, I, I know we like to think that I know Jesus loves you no matter how you live, and that's true. But there is a right way and a wrong way to live, and, and that authority is found in his word. It's not found in my opinions. It's not found in what I hope it will be. It's not found in what I think it should be. It's found through a study of his word. And so there is a right way and a wrong way to live. And so Jesus was the right way to live in front of everybody. He corrected the religious leaders, all the churchgoers of the day. He corrected those who uh, never believed in any of it. He came to one and talked to people who no one else in culture was even allowed to speak with. He came and was right living in front of everybody. But now that he's gone away, now it's important to understand this, that it's about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. Now the Holy Spirit comes into you to show you that right way and that wrong way and you become the righteousness of God only with the Holy Spirit living in you. We just prayed that, right? Our righteousness amounts to nothing, Pastor Tony said. But his righteousness is perfect. What if his righteousness could live in you? Then you could live rightly. And you could do so in front of the whole world. That even if Jesus wasn't here, he still was because his right living is modeled in you. Over sin disbelief, over righteousness of right living, over judgment, verse 11, about judgment. Here's what I mean. Because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I love this phrase. I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the devil, are you? Not a fan. Not a fan. But I, let me tell you why I really love this phrase. I really love this phrase. Because, you know, Jesus has a lot to judge us with. And he certainly has got a lot to judge this world because, man, they're messed up. And Jesus declares who the enemy is. It's not the world. It's not all your screw-ups. It's not all their screw-ups. 
The Holy Spirit didn't come to judge the world because Jesus didn't even do that. He came to save it. So in sin, I'm going to come and give the whole world belief. In righteousness, I'm going to go away so that you become the right living in front of them. In judgment, I'm going to let you declare who the real enemy is and I will be the advocate to declare he is condemned. Wouldn't you want that inside of you? That is the cure for the kingdom of heaven permeating every single area of your life like water flowing into every dry place right now in your mind. You're believing, could it be? Is it possible? I don't know. I'm worried. I have doubts. Oh, what you need is an infusion of the Holy Spirit because it is inside out, upside down, and finally it is right side down. He goes on in chapter 16 in this conversation before I go away. I have much more to say to you. More than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes. I love the fact that one of the reasons why he has to go away and the Holy Spirit has to come. Because if I tell you everything, it'll blow your mind. If God tried to tell you everything you wanted to know, you can't handle the truth. Okay, you cannot handle it. You cannot. But I'm going to send you one who gives you just the truth you can handle today. I'm going to give you one who gives you this next truth and this next truth and this next truth and this next truth. Oh, this big truth you are certainly not ready for. But I'm going to send you one who will get you ready for that truth. And you will. And you'll look back and go, oh, I wish I knew that all along. You weren't ready to know it all along. He gives wisdom to our elders because they've lived a lot of life. And if they're Holy Spirit filled, they have God in them, giving them truth each step of the way. And he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. All this time, Jesus, we could know what's yet to come. This is what I've been asking you for. Can you just show me? Stop telling me one step at a time. Your word is a lamp to my feet. What about the forest? I get it. I'm thankful for the lamp to my feet, but I want the big spot to come on, like that big giant spot that you can't even look at that just lights this whole thing up. There's nothing hidden up here. It's just, wow. Uh, they should put makeup on me or something. It's, there's a lot of HD quality cameras and all kinds of stuff. There's nowhere to hide. And now I'm seeing spots on my <laughs> notes. I'm like... I literally cannot even see anything right now. But I think what it says, I'm serious. Um, Oh, I can read that up there. Uh, He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Wow, the power of the future. Now, if we're not careful... If I list enough benefits on the benefit side of the column and not talk about the pain part and all that stuff and all the process, okay, you will just sign up and go, oh, I'm in, I'm in, and not do the process that gets you to the promise, okay? And so it's important to understand this. And understand the mission. Let's back up to John 15 in that farewell conversation. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify. Now, 
one of the really big reasons why Jesus was going away and telling them the advocate was coming because he was sending them on mission. There was a purpose to the Holy Spirit living in them. The Holy Spirit was not given to them to be a crystal ball, to know the future, to be an instant healer for every time I needed healing for me and my family, to be an instant success meter of me always knowing the right way to go. You know, I just always know I'm just so discerning that way. It actually wasn't given for your benefit. It was given for the benefit of the whole world to know. Sorry, I got to jump. It's that big. I can't, I don't have arms big enough to go to the whole world, but we can't imagine how big this mission is. And we're holding some of us, the Holy Spirit for our own little side missions. That's not why. This uh, Go to the beginning of the church. You would be my witnesses to the whole world, to the same town you're living in, to the region and the counties that you're living in, the city you're living in, the counties you're living in, the region you're living in, the state you're living in, the country you're living in, the world you're living in, that you would just keep going out because you would be my witnesses when the power of the Spirit comes on you. When the power of the Spirit comes on me, I will shake, rattle, and roll for me. No, 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 no. You will move and shake for this world. You become my witness. The word witness that he uses, ho, ho, buckle up. Martureo, to testify. To be a witness, to bear witness, to affirm that one has seen or heard or experienced something or that he knows it because taught by divine revelation or inspiration. It comes from the root word martus, martyr, martyr. That you would have the power of God to testify in you because you cannot Keep it silent, even in the most extreme situations that his followers, every single one of them would face, which was death, to speak it. Death, to testify. You testify, you die. I wonder, how, is, how important is it for you to testify of God's work in your life? Well, if I walked over to that neighbor, it would be ridiculous. That would be insane. They're not going to kill you. Maybe we don't have the Holy Spirit because we don't have the holy mission. Maybe that has something to do with what blocks me at times to having the kingdom living in me because I'm not advancing the kingdom. I'm just growing, getting fat and happy, loving it. Oh, growing, 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 growing. That's great. That's necessary. But it's necessary to an end. It is necessary so that you would have the courage to martyr. You would have the courage to testify at any cost. You would have the courage and the peace to know God is, has authority over my testimony and I will speak it whenever he calls me to do so. And it doesn't matter who's in the room, what school I'm in, what the rules are. It does not matter because he is my king and his kingdom is the one I'm testifying of. That is the mission. That is the purpose. And that is his Holy Spirit upside down, (laughs) right side up. And it starts inside out. This summer, 
we've had many people in our church and family ex experience great revival in their lives. In fact, over 200 people have gone through discipleship workshops or classes or taken something uh, along the way to identify. I told you at the beginning of the year, do you remember what I said? That we would be focusing on discipleship this year. And that we going forward would be a people who are always identifying and asking this question, what is my next spiritual step? And that no one would walk alone. That we would do this together. And so we began to open up more and more workshops and more and more uh, classes and more and more book studies and, and more and more uh, things that are happening. We've got more coming up. In fact, we're getting ready to launch a whole fall series for you to get involved. So you're like, well, you didn't, weren't in the summer session. That's okay. We got a whole fall session coming up of Wednesday night classes and, and uh, how to study the Bible and how to parent better and how to manage my finances better. We have many things going on. One of those uh, works workshops that has been happening that some of you have heard about because so many have gone through it are Holy Spirit workshops. And in those Holy Spirit workshops, we've had people going through and experiencing revival in their lives because when you have the king himself, the kingdom come into your life and saturate, it's like water that pours into every single organ and every single fiber and every single being of how you think, how you walk, how you live physically, mentally, emotionally, all of it, it just pours through every part of you. So rather than hearing in my words, why don't you hear from the words of some of those who experienced this past summer session in some of these workshops. Take a listen. Hey, I'm Pat, and what drew me to the Holy Spirit class? Um, I'd always had a little bit of uh, anxiety around the Holy Spirit. I, I understood the Father, I understood the Son, um, but I just always felt like I couldn't fully grasp um, who the Holy Spirit was. And it was uh, back in early ju June, and I, I decided I, I needed to learn how to pray better. So I, I prayed to God. I was compelled, just like that, to, to come to this Holy Spirit class. I never experienced the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to meet Him or trying to figure out how to get to the Holy Spirit. Probably the biggest thing that's happened in these classes is, even though I've been you know, a Christian a while and been doing this walk, and I've had a lot of the pieces, but for me, this is the first time that I've kind of put the pieces together. The Holy Spirit is kind of what I was missing. And so I had all these pieces, but they weren't all together to make the picture. And so learning about how to activate and not just be, you know, shaken by this world, but I can actually activate the spirit to move, um, it's just been an absolute blessing. And it's just really made the whole Christian walk brighter, crisper, and more alive. My sister. She took her life nine months ago, and um, I had a deep pain in my heart for all that time after. And as soon as the Lord spoke to me and said, focus on that picture you have of her, not the way she was before she died, the pain disappeared and it's never returned. And it was with me day and night and getting worse as each season would roll around and I'd remember her. It was just God touching me physically and emotionally, and it, it really meant a lot to me. Knowing that I have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, knowing that when I believe that God has not spoken to me, I discovered during class that yes, He has had been speaking to my life for a long time. And in class, I was able to discover how he had spoken to me, how he had worked in our life, how he had been present in so many situations in our life. 
Yes, the biggest testimony that I have um, coming out of this class, um, I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I received the gift of speaking tongues um, one of the nights that we were here. It was the most amazing, powerful, and unmistakable interaction with, with the Lord that I've ever had. I sat down in the back and was like, what just happened? But it was, it was amazing. And then like anxiety, like fear, doubt, like, like the next several weeks, it was just like gone. One of the biggest things that kind of I prayed about for, for a long time and got a chance to actually experience it here was praying in the spirit. I'm, I'm an overthinker and so it's, it's something that I've held me back and just kind of talking with Pastor Dave, talking with, with Amy, with Dana, and just kind of broke free of that kind of constraint I had on myself and kind of was able to pray in the spirit. and. I remember the, the week of or the next week when we were kind of sharing and reflecting, I was, I was telling everybody, you know, I, when it first happened and I got baptized in the Spirit and I was able to pray in the Spirit, I had this like huge smile on my face that I couldn't wipe off. <laughs> and then I realized a couple of people came up to me after that meeting and they were like, yeah, we, we noticed your smile and it was, it, was too, it was too wild. I was like, yeah, I, I literally could not help it. Fear was a part, I have a problem with it. Doing something, the Spirit's going to make me do something, you know, really freaky, but um, I'm over that now. He's, just like Pastor Dave said, he's such a gentleman, and he won't do anything that will make me feel uncomfortable. So just knowing that, it's very helpful. It was one night at the class, he spoke, and he is a gentleman. He, um, he told me what was wrong. And what I needed to do, he gave me the instructions. And yeah, it changed my life. To the point that now, every time I have to do something, um, I'm starting to consult him before I take my decisions. And I really appreciate this opportunity that we have this class here at Western Assembly of God. It has really touched me. Thank you to each and every one of you who shared, and thank you to, to those. I, I mentioned about 200 people in our discipleship uh, session, summer session. Over 100 of those have gone through the uh, Holy Spirit workshops, and so many people are experiencing That's just the summer session. Now, listen, I could have an emotional um, invitation right now, and maybe have a lot of people come forward and say receive the spirit and I, I, I come from a background where the Holy Spirit is a little scary I, I'm, I grew up Baptist um, so I, I relate to people a lot who don't understand that or think I, I had all the Holy Spirit I don't know what you're talking about what is this baptism I, what, what does that mean what, what is all, all of that what does it mean tongues I, I have a tongue what is that I don't, I don't know um, other languages, yeah, I mean, I studied French in high school, I didn't understand it, I still don't. I, I, I just relate to you, you're my people, I get it. And I relate to, I've been in a Pentecostal tradition now for over 20 years, my wife and I have been in this church, and it's meant a lot, we, we came into a better understanding of the Holy Spirit in this place and while we were here, but actually it was through a study we did on our own of just going through scripture. And I determined when the Lord called me to lead from this role that we would be a place that's safe to come and explore the Holy Spirit and all that he has for you. I'm so grateful to Pastor Dave and his team for facilitating that but it's been a dream of ours. And Sue and I um, are very grateful to start to see some fruit from things that we've prayed so many years ago. But you have a lot of questions. And God has a lot of answers. And I can't answer them all right now, but I want to invite you responsibly to come 
into a safe space and explore the Holy Spirit. Luke records, says, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. He goes on to say, which of you fathers, if your son asked for a fish, would give him a snake instead? Or if he asked for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry. Nothing weird's about to happen. We're inviting you into a space to go on a journey, to ask every single question, to come as a skeptic, to come as you are, to come as a believer, to come as a non-believer, to come as a person who's, who's investigating. And it, it doesn't matter how we come. Is If you seek, you'll find something. And, and God is a gentleman. He is. He doesn't kick the door in. He doesn't kick it in. He doesn't invade your house. He comes when you open the door. He comes when you come knocking. He he makes himself known to those who seek him. But at the same time, I don't want this emotional response. I do want to respond because I also know I've sat in those pews many times and thought, well, I should do something about that. You know, maybe I'll just read on my own. Maybe I'll, I'll start to investigate this more. You know, I might Google this when I get home. See what, see what the internet has to say, because that's so helpful always. <laughs> I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. And I, I, why couldn't something be now? Now, I can't give you all understanding, and this isn't the class, and I want you to sign up, and you can go to our website and sign up for all of these discipleship offerings this fall. You can go to discipleship and click on all the different things. You can go to groups, and we've put uh, the Holy Spirit workshops because they're, they're groups to in, under groups as well. So you can look at all of them. So go and do that, but before you leave, make a commitment to do so. This is a moment where God is speaking to you. Respond to that. If you're watching at home, create a space right now. If you're in this place right now, would you just stand right now wherever you're at? Would you just stand? I've asked Rachel to just lead us in some worship. And if you're saying in your heart, you know, I need to do something. I need to do something about this. I need to go investigate this. I need to perhaps take that next class or I need to do something right now. I want to do something with the Lord and make a commitment. And I want to come and, and pray over that and commit that at the altar. Then I want you to step out. Maybe that's a physical scary thing. And that's the biggest scariest thing you'll do right now is just step out and walk forward and let us pray for you. And then... Those of you who are going to come, and I'm just going to tell you up front so there's nothing weird happening. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to come and ask you to come and pray up here while we're singing. And then those of you who've taken the summer session or, or you've taken any Holy Spirit workshop in our church, I want you to come. If you've already experienced this, then I want, I'm going to call for you. Don't come now. I'm going to call for you in a little bit. And we're going to pray over every single person who's going to enter this process and those who are already in it or have entered it ahead of you are just going to pray for that experience that God would reveal himself to you in the way that you need and only he knows the way that you would receive that specific to you. So I'm just going to open this up. If you're ready to make that commitment and, and do something about it, 
Come and pray right now. Make this your prayer. these folks are praying, I'm going to ask any of you who've already been involved in a, in a Holy Spirit workshop, you've already been involved in one right now, would you make your way up here? Would you just place your hands over them? You don't even have, you, some of you can put a hand on their shoulder, one or two of you, don't overwhelm them. Um, and then just place your hands over them. If you're not, you don't even have to get all the way up. You can just place your hand, raise your hand, stretch your hand to these folks right now. I'm going to ask you also, those of you who are in the congregation, who you've experienced the Holy Spirit right now, would you stretch your hand towards this group of people right now? Would you stretch your hand to this? If you're watching online, would you let us know? Would you make a prayer in the chat? Would you stretch a hand right now? Would you just begin to pray? Those of you who pray in the spirit, you can pray in the spirit. Those of you who can pray, and would you just pray right now for this group of people right now? Lord Jesus, we come to you and ask you, oh God, Lord Jesus, we ask you for each and every person right now making a commitment to saying, I want more of your Holy Spirit. I want more of you. Lord, reveal yourself in ways that you've never I pray Lord for gifts to be released in Jesus name I pray oh God that you would release gifts that have never been present before that they would be forward now in the future of those who claim your Holy Spirit God I pray oh Lord for words of wisdom and knowledge and instruction Lord I pray oh God that fear would be gone and disappeared and erased and the enemy would be condemned Lord, I pray for victory in the lives of these who are committing their lives to you right now. Don't let the enemy have a moment. Don't let the enemy have a thought right now in Jesus' name. They are yours to claim in the Holy Spirit. You went away to send the Comforter. You went away to send the Holy Spirit to them in Jesus' name. So God, I pray right now that you would be the one who touches them, that your hand would be on their shoulder, that your voice would be in their minds, that your courage would be in their hearts, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that their, your peace would guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus, we pray, oh God, over each and every person in this church. Thank you for those who are walking in the Spirit in this congregation. Lord, I pray revival on West End Assembly of God. I pray, oh Lord, for your Holy Spirit to come, to drop in this place. And Lord, we're not looking to be a show. We're looking to become your living word in the community. Lord, we're 
looking to take on your mission that when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit that we would become your witnesses, your martyrs to speak your truth in your kingdom come. Your will be done in West End Assembly of God in the lives of these in our church family, in the lives of our community, in our students, in those who are in school right now, those who are at work. I pray, oh God, revival to come to every place in Richmond, Virginia, surrounding areas and in the Commonwealth and in the United States of America and in this world that we would hear of revival breaking out because your Holy Spirit has come. In Jesus' name, we claim them for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray.